Hello everybody! Hello! I don't know what that voice was, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Jodie here, Decorous Vintage Designs and I hope everybody's okay. I am coming to you today from Yorkshire um, in England and I hope everybody's okay. Um, so what I've got today is I'm just going to be experimenting a little bit with chalk paste again today because I do really love the chalk paste. They're very thick. I'm just trying to make sure you're centered and hopefully you're not going to fall because my tripod is not the steadiest um so um yeah so the chalk paste are one of my favorites to use um just bear with me i'm also just sharing there's a new group by the way guys if you are not aware um there's a new prima group and a european one so if you are not a part of that european group then do sign up to it um, so there, there are a lot more European content creators and things now. Um, so hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a shame I can't do this just before. Right, done. Okay, yeah, so I'm ready. Uh, chalk pastes. I've got this little piece behind me today. Um, I'll, I'll lower you down in a moment once I've done explaining. I put a couple of moulds on there. I think I can never pronounce it very well. I think this one's called the Tullam Keyholes, I think. I think I pronounced that right. I don't know. Um, and then this one, I think it's the Iron Bridgegate mould down there. Um, so I've just put these on for an extra bit of decoration. This piece of furniture is not really anything special. It actually only cost me a pound. So the reason why I bought it was uh, because these pulls are definitely worth more than a pound in themselves. But then as I got looking at it, I've actually realised it's a very solid piece of furniture. So um, I thought I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to paint it up and see what I can do with it. So yeah, back to chalk pastes. So um, I'm going to be painting, I'm going to try and paint this whole piece again in chalk pastes. I've done that a couple of times uh, with a couple of other pieces and they are very thick. Um, they, they, there are some very lovely colours. I think I've shown you a few before, um, but you can see a few here. You've got colours that range from bright green turquoise like this uh, and very pigmented as you can see to very kind of soft country colours like I'll be using today. So this one's called English Country. So it's going to be my base. And it's almost like it's like white and it's got a little bit of a grey, taupey colour to it. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of like a nice warm grey, I would say, that one. I'm not very good at um, thinking colours. And then I've got some Buxton Blue here, which is a very nice soft colour too. So they're very thick. They're not really, um, they, they weren't made in mind for painting, I don't think. Hi Helen, how are you? Um, I don't think they were made in mind for painting, however I have found them great to paint with, especially if you like the um, oldie worldy textured looks like I do, they're great for that. Um, so I'm just going to have a bit of a play around with them today and I'm just going to kind of just see what happens. Um, so yeah, so let's see, I'm just going to lower you down a little bit so you guys can see that. It's only a little piece. Can you see that? Is that okay? So, um, right, where's my water mister? Uh, I'm going to actually start. I think I will end up stippling this as I normally do. So stippling is where you just dab. That's what I like to call dabby da a bit of dabby dabby. Um, but I'm going to see what happens. I've never really tried painting with the chalk pastes. Um, they are, as I say, they are mainly intended to be decorative. A little bit of dry brushing, um, a little bit of um, go on, a little bit of raised stenciling because that's the kind of texture that they're made for. Um, so I don't really know if they can be painted on like like you would normally paint a piece, but I'm going to try and I'm just curious. I probably will end up stippling, but I'm going to see what happens if I do try to paint it on like you would normal paint. Worth a try. I can always just cover it up if if it doesn't look very good. So I've not done this before, so don't blame me. So if it doesn't look good, we'll just change it up. So, you know, it's the first time I've done it. So I'm going to use my water mister and I'm just going to give the furniture another spritz. This furniture looks like it might bleed, but I'm okay with that because I'm going to be doing a lot of layers. So if you do see a bit of bleed through, don't panic because there are going to be quite a bit of few layers put on this. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I've got my, I'm just using a nice large round brush. Can you see how thick that is? It doesn't even move. <laughs> it's very thick. And I'm going to actually just give my brush with the paint on a very good spray. Don't know what's going to happen here. Um, and let's just paint it and let's just see. I'm also painting the hardware today. I want the hardware to be part of the piece. So I imagine, so that's going on quite nicely actually. They have a really nice uh, floral, um, Sort of like a detergent smell to them as well, really fragrant. So I'm going to be careful because I glued the bolt moulds on not that long ago. 
I don't imagine I will get a smooth finish with it, but as I say, I'm just kind of curious. I wonder what happens if I do kind of circular movements. Can you see that? The circular movements aren't looking so good. Let's just get this on, let's just see. I think this is looking okay actually, I'm quite surprised. <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to kind of paint this as well over the uh, pulls. So this is just my base coat. I never worry too much about um, base coats because I, as I say, I do a lot of layers. I very rarely do, um, you know, very simple one colour finishes. It's unusual for me to do that. So when I do my base coat, I'm not too concerned about it being perfect. For me, it's more just about getting the paint on there. And if you do want a textured look, as I say, these are great for texture, these chalk pastes. And just in case you just join in, it's the English country chalk paste that I'm using today. Um, a great way to get texture is not to use water, although you will need to use a little bit with these, and also um, just to put your brush strokes in lots of different directions. So what this will mean is um, you get different texture gradients and different brush strokes in various different areas. So then when you go onto your next layer, um, you've got this kind of buildup of texture, like organic kind of texture, rather than it just being a perfect smooth finish. And as I say, the other way to get texture, which I often do, is to stipple like this. And this creates like a bit of a stone effect. But today I'm going to see, I'm going to make, I want to experiment because this piece, as I say, was cost me a pound. It was really cheap. Um, British Heart Foundations, which, which is a charity shop, um, a national charity shop. I've got a furniture store, one of their furniture stores near me. And we were going back into lockdown again, so they were trying to get rid of loads of stuff. So I've got some really good finds. So if this doesn't go to plan, like, I'm okay, because it, it was cheap. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, and if you are popping on, let me know where you're popping on from today, guys. I'm from Yorkshire. It's 8 o'clock where I am. I'm a night owl. <laughs> I don't really do mornings. In fact, I barely ever even really see the mornings. I'm usually up quite late. I like to work during the evenings and sometimes till the early hours in the morning, actually, as well. That tends to be when I'm most um, kind of creative. And in my zone. I'm not in my zone in the morning, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm grumpy and um, just grumpy, I'm just grumpy <laughs> and lazy in mornings. Uh, I had a nine to five job for a long time and God knows how I managed that. Right, so this, I'll bring you up closer in a second. Hey Barbara, hi Llewellyn, how are you Llewellyn? Um, how was your retreat? You went to Waco recently, didn't you? Um, so, um, so I'll bring you up in, in, closer in a second, guys, to show you the texture that this chalk paste is creating. I'm going to get my base coat on. Um, hopefully you can see a little bit on the camera how the colour is thicker in some areas and thinner in others because of the kind of brush strokes that I'm using. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to give, give it a bit of quick dry and then I'm going to move on to my next colour, which I will be stippling on, I think. So I'm going to get this on the pulls. And if you guys have got any questions, around these pastes, let me know because I'm becoming a little bit of an expert with them because I use them all the time um, and I use them in ways that they weren't really intended for because I just enjoy them that much. I enjoy the texture and I enjoy the colours so um, yes. Uh, I'm just seeing who's popping on. Okay, you're all chatting. You're all chatting amongst yourselves, that's good. So this is like, so this English country colour, this chalk paste, is a really nice um, it is a really soft colour, as I say it's got a tiny little bit of a brown tinge to it, it's showing up more white on camera but it's actually a little bit more um, beige in person and it's a very classic colour I would say, very classic, it is exactly what it says on the tin, it's a very classic English colour. I'm going to lower you down a little bit actually so you can see less of the top, is that better? That's way better isn't it, you can see that so much better. Um, okay. So don't expect, I don't think you can get a smooth finish with these chalk pastes, but they are excellent for textured finishes. And I'm just getting my brush in all these details here in the moulds um, and making sure that the um, pulls are totally covered as well. Or as covered as they can be right now. And you've got time to work it as well. So you can, I'm just going to try and fit my big head on the camera. <laughs> um, so you can reactivate it with water. Um, and it does stay wet for quite a while because it is thick, 
but you can go in and do different things. So you can come in and just do, as I say, various different brush strokes, and that will create various gradients of texture, as I've just said. So I'm just going to come in and just do that a little bit now before I give it a dry. I'm going to make sure I've got it all the way up there as well. I'll come in and I'll do the top and the details a little bit afterwards. Um, da -da -da -da. What paste are you working with today? I am using the chalk paste, Barbara. I'm using the English Country. And then I'm going to give this a dry now and I'm going to move on to the Buxton Blue. So just bear with me while I give this a quick dry. That's the only problem with life sometimes, isn't it? Like, if you want to move on to the next stage, if you do something quickly, um, you have to blow dry it or head, you know, heat it up or whatever, just dry it. And it's a bit, it's a bit disturbed, you know, it causes a bit of a disturbance on the lives. But fortunately, that's, that's the nature of them sometimes. So just give me one second, guys. If you've got any questions in the meantime, pop them down there and I will um, answer them in a sec. I think that should be okay for the purpose of tonight's live. Cool, I have never thought of doing that. Yeah, the, it's surprising how versatile these uh, pastes are, Llewellyn. Um, I'm having to really crouch down, guys, to see comments. Sorry, you can see how little this furniture is. Hi, Jodie, I am loving your accent. I am from Harrogate, but currently living in Tampa, Florida, and it's so nice to hear a Yorkshire accent again. Yeah, but you, Alison, you guys have posh Yorkshire accents in Harrogate, right? It's posh, <laughs> I don't. I'm from South Yorkshire, which is like the broad, uh, thick accent, although I have lost it a little bit because I've, I've moved around the country a lot, so I've got lots of different accents. But yeah, um, well, but I've got a northern accent, but sometimes little twang of other things come through. So, um, right, okay, so I'm gonna move on to my Buxton Blue now. I'm not entirely sure at the moment what brush I want to use, but I'm going to have a play again. I'm trying not to hunch. Um, and I'm just gonna see what works. So I'm just going to try with this little brush here, this rounded edge brush, and just see what happens. I was never posh. <laughs> Helen's posh, I think Helen's from North Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> that's a posh area. I always just think of North Yorkshire as being posh because uh, of all the countryside and the uh, rich country houses and things. We don't have many rich country houses near me. <laughs> right, okay, so this is Buxton Blue. Um, it's mo it's kind of like a bit of a duck egg. It's got a bit of grey in there and a tiny bit of green, I would say, as well. So I am going to stipple this now. Um, this is as far as I've kind of got in this plan, really. So I'm just kind of just, I'm just going to see what happens. And I'm basically going to cover up the white. Uh, but what the white, what the English country colour will do now is it will, um, it will kind of have a bit of an effect on this colour. Um, it will affect the tone a little bit and just make sure this the, the colours in this will fully come out um, and it will also warm it up a little bit um, and also it's still a little bit wet in some places so I imagine it's going to dilute this down in some places as, as well so again that just creates that kind of texture and you know difference in colours and gradients and things. Um, I am from living in Tampa living in UK for 40 years so you've, you've been living in UK for 40 years, Deborah then, um, or Florida. <laughs> I'm off the top edge, so I have a Teesside accent. Oh, Teesside's not posh, no. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just kinda 
going to, if you do stipple in, I just want to make you guys aware that um, it does affect your brushes, so don't use like your favourite ever brush for this kind of technique. And I'm just kind of going to start stippling this on. And they're going to, there's going to be a lot of layers on this piece. And one, let me bring you in a bit closer. And once I've done this, um, I'll, I will bring you in like fully close. You might be a little bit cockeyed now, sorry. So this creates a lot of texture and it creates a very good oldie worldy look and um, almost like a stone effect because you get different build ups, you get the brush bris the brush I can never say that brush bristles um, creating different textures and things as well. So it's a really fun thing to do. What I might actually do, I brought a few extra bits here, is I've got some Turkish coffee here as well. And this is like, can you see that? It's like a it's brown. I don't know how else. I'm really bad at explaining colours. It's brown. It's it's brown with a bit of um I don't know, it's like it's got a bit of a red tinge to it, I think. I don't know. Um and maybe what I'll do, I'm not going to use any water for this part either because um I kind of want the uh um I want the texture and water dilutes texture down. So I'm just going to use them straight out of the packet and I'm actually just going to I might need to use a little bit for blending, but we'll see. But I'm actually going to use some of the Turkish coffee for depth around the edges. And that's going to create this kind of shadow and it's going to help the piece look kind of aged. So you can probably see straight away it's it's kind of transformed that. And what I want what you need to make sure as well as when you do this is you don't just do a straight edge, you want to bring some of it a little bit further down because what will happen otherwise it will just look too clean if you've got that perfect edge. It's looking like it's kind of straight there, but it's not in person. Let me show you. So this is the chalk pastes. And can you see it's not straight? And can you see the texture that it's creating? So this was the English country that I've put on there. And it's created a really nice base. This is the Buxton blue. And this is, sorry, ignore my hands, they're very messy. Um, and this is the Turkish coffee. And we're just creating some texture here. But hopefully you can see how nice the colours are as well to paint with. Uh, morning Tracy. Oh, oh is, is it morning in Australia? Very early there for you guys then. <laughs> it's 8pm here where I am. Um, I've not even had my tea yet. I've not had anything to eat yet. Okay, so I'll just make sure you guys are... So I'm kind of just going to stick all this on. I'm going to put it over the pulls as well. And we'll just see what happens. Um, I've got a very vague plan of what I want to do for this piece. So... We'll just have to see how it goes. But I think it's going to look kind of cute when it's done. I think it'll look totally different. I don't think it will look like the, that boring one pound piece of furniture I bought from the charity shop. I think it's going to look quite interesting once I've finished with it. So again, so what you need to do, so when you like create an oldie worldie look and you want to use, you can use dark wax as well, that's always something you can use, but you tend to use a warm dark colour around the edges and what that does is it creates this kind of, um, well, for a start, it creates depth and shadowing. But what it also does is, if you think about when, you know, you've got a piece of furniture and it becomes worn, and I say this all the time, um, and where hands have been and where things have been exposed, that's where you want to put your darker, warm colour um, to create those kind of worn edges, if that makes any sense at all. I've just got a low battery message and um, I don't know why because it's plugged in to the charger. Oh, it's charging now, it's okay. So yeah, so just stipple and you can see what it does to your brush. So you need to make sure you're not using a very good brush or a brush that you know you're happy to replace because it will eventually damage it. Um, and different brushes. So if I were to use this, this is what I normally use for stippling, these kind of cheap chip brushes. They create a different kind of texture because they're a different shape. So that's something to keep in mind as well, is the uh, shape of your brush. I'm just going to do a bit of tapping. I think I've got some stippling muscles now as well. Um, <laughs> I've been told that when people try this, they get really tired and then my arm doesn't seem to get tired anymore. So by the time I'm done, I'm going to have this arm like Popeye and this arm's just going to be really skinny. <laughs> um, hi, watching from Emerald Isle. It's an island. That is Emerald Island Island. Sorry, I've never heard of it. Um, 
So yeah, so I'm going to tap over the moulds because I want the moulds to look like part of the piece as well. And we're just going to create, as I say, some texture on this. And some oldie worldy vibes, which I love. I think that word comes, ye old, oldie worldy, it's like an old English word. Um, if some of the white pops through underneath, I'm happy with that as well because again, it's just adding to that kind of age distress look. We want it to look like it's had lots of paint on it and that paint is, is starting to peel back over time. And, you know, revealing different paint finishes and colours and things. That's kind of my style <laughs> overall. So I'm going to go back, so this is Buxton Blue, and I'm going to go back to my Turkish coffee now. I might even, it doesn't have to be perfect, I might even do more Turkish coffee here, around this pull, because maybe it's just been exposed a little bit more here, and you know, it's had more people touch it, or it's just been weathered a little bit, so I'm going to do a little bit more on this side than maybe I would on that side, and that's okay as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's great about these kind of looks, that they don't have to be perfect. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to come back in with some Buxton Blue, which is a bit like a duck egg blue, I would say. And just blend that in there a little bit as well. And I'm just, what's left on my brush here, I'm just going to kind of gently dry brush a little bit over the moulds because I want them to look like they've been a little bit worn as well. So I hope this is making sense a little bit. <laughs> and hopefully I've shown you something different with chalk paste today that you might not have seen before. I do love using them. I've used them in lots of different ways. So if anybody's ever got any questions, as I say, feel free to ask me. You can ask me now on the slide or you can always just drop me a message afterwards if you want to. Stippling, aka Dabby Dabby. Yes, we love a bit of Dabby Dabby, Barbara. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Turkish coffee here again. So hopefully you can see that the colours are very pigmented. Well, you know what? You could even go a little bit crazy. So this is the. Um, I'm just going to go crazy. I, do you know? I just really want to play with this piece because it was just so cheap. I'm not worried about ruining it. Um, so this is the Neptune colour, and I think this is, a, I've always thought this colour is very nice for, um, like, a bit of a patina, but I've only ever really done the patinas with it on, like, little home decor items before. So I'm just trying to think what brush I might want to use. Hmm. I'm going to use this dabbing brush from Prima. You can, can you see what stippling eventually does to your brushes? I'm going to pull you out a little bit again, actually. I'm feeling a bit hunched over. <laughs> it's not good for my back. Um, so this... If this goes wrong, that's totally fine. I can always just cover it back up again. So at the bottom, I'm going to get my, um, hang on. I'm going to get this Neptune color, uh, which is like a very dark green turquoise, very patinary kind of color. And maybe I'll just dab a little bit of this at the bottom as well, very gently, just to create this kind of patina effect. And that looks amazing, actually. That looks pretty good. I like it. So we're just blending all of these colours together, um, as I say, just to get this very authentic, worn, weathered feel to this piece of furniture. And I'm just experimenting, so don't, don't like, shout at me if it goes wrong. <laughs> I really like this. I think that looks really good. Yeah, okay, I think we're on to a winner here. Come in, and now I'm just going to get my three colours, so I've got Buxton Blue, Neptune and Turkish coffee and I'm just kind of going to just keep going back and forth between these colours. What I don't want is any colour being too dominating. I don't want any colour to be kind of like too eye-catching. I want it all to look like in synergy. So some Turkish coffee here as well. I will bring you closer in a sec guys. So um, I'm going to take a step back now and I'm just going to look at what's happening. <laughs> um, so I think maybe some more Neptune down here might look nice. That is a beautiful colour. Yes, the Neptune I think is one of my favourites out of the whole range. And my other favourite, I brought a few here in case I, I knew I'd want a few. I wasn't sure what I wanted when I started. Uh, this one's Antique Sage. And that's 
that looks kind of boring on camera but it's actually a very nice color it's a very nice sophisticated um color to use it's like um a dark greeny gray <laughs> um it's a sage color that's what it is so yeah it's very nice um so i'm going to get my neptune now and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to see what it looks like i'm going to try some neptune just down here and i'm going to kind of see what that looks like down here as well and guys, if you're liking this video, um, you know, it's always like a big compliment if you can share it about as well. And um, it just helps me a little bit as well. I also have a YouTube channel um, with other tutorials on there. So if you want some more tutorials, go hop over onto there as well. I'm not very good at self-advertising, so I'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> just to let you guys know, there is a YouTube channel there. And um, yeah, I appreciate any shares. Thank you. Or any hearts and likes, it's always the highest one with flattery. So yeah, so this is the Neptune colour, this is turquoise. And I'm going to, don't worry if it's looking a little bit too blockish at the moment, because I'm going to blend that in a sec. Maybe I'll put a little bit over here as well, maybe just kind of lightly dab it around here. And then come again with my books and blue and just blend that out. And don't try not to molt on here. I always molt. The other thing to watch out for, guys, when you're doing this kind of look, I have really molted on this piece of furniture. There's like this big hair that I'm just trying to get off. Um, the other thing to remember, guys, um, is because it is so harsh on your brushes, um, watch out for bristles because what you don't want is um, bristles like everywhere. So keep an eye out for that in case you lose any. You want to make sure that you don't, you know, obviously leave them in the paint finish. So what I'm doing here is getting my Buxton Blue. There's hardly any on my brush, it's kind of just what's left over and I'm just going over the uh, Neptune because I want it to look much more subdued. And I'm going to do the same down here as well. So we've got this big block here and I'm just going to get my um, Buxton Blue colour and just go over the Neptune a little bit. So the Neptune will be my most my, pre my predominant colour, but the, um, go on. The books and blue will just calm it down a little bit, make it look less in your face, hopefully. And I'll also put some Turkish coffee on underneath in a mo as well. So it's all that for me when I paint, I like to bring in lots of different colours and techniques. But it's all about balance, you know. It's all all about making sure all those uh, colours balance each other out. Um, okay. So this is my Neptune again. And I'm just going back and forth now between my three colours, as I say. Bring a little bit more up here again. So when you, um, so I don't actually know if this chalk paste is water-based or not, and I don't think Roz is on here today to um, tell me. But I have, um, I have finished this piece before in um, in water-based waxes and water-based top coats, and it seems to be absolutely fine. So. I'd be interested to know, I've, I've used um, Dixie Belle's Clear Wax and Dixie Belle's um, Suzanne's Garden on this, the Big Mama's Butter, and both seem to have, have sealed the chalk paste absolutely fine. So I think you can use any wax to seal this as well, and any, um, and any top coat should be fine. So I'm just coming in again now with a little bit more of this Neptune colour up here. So as I say, I don't want it like, there's my blue, there's my green, there's my brown sort of thing. I want it all balanced and then I'm coming in again with some Buxton Blue. So it's kind of taking a different look on to what I originally thought it would but that's like kind of okay that's what I was expecting so I'm okay with that. And just take your time with it there's no rush just take your time and you know just figure it out as you go along. So this is Turkish coffee and I'm going to put more of the Turkish coffee on the bottom there on the feet because the feet, out of any any of the furniture, the feet are the most exposed and most likely to have aged. So I'm going to be putting way more Turkish coffee down there than the rest of the piece. Hi Jody, love the colours. Thank you Cheryl. Appreciate that. Uh, this is Turkish coffee. Just do it, tap, tap this on a little bit. So the colours on there guys, I'll, I'll bring you in a little bit, bring it further down again. So can you see now, so we had this big block of Neptune, we had a big block of this, 
and then a big block of blue it felt like and then a big block of the Turkish coffee at the top and by you can definitely see that with Neptune is the most dominant colour down here then the Buxton blue and then the Turkish coffee um, but by um, you know mixing them up a little bit and taking away and adding each colour a little bit to the other colour what it's doing is it's just subduing it all a little bit and making it look a little bit more authentic and a little bit more natural So I'll bring you in in a sec, guys, and show you the texture it's kind of created. Um, so if I bring you guys in, can you see that texture? It's very kind of um, raised. My fingers are so messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I always get paint all over my hands. Here, so this is what I'm telling you to look out for as well. So can you see here, there's a little bristle. So you'd really need to just be careful. Let me get that in a sec and I'll paint over it in a minute you really just need to be careful that you don't leave any brush, brush bristles behind it either so yeah so we've got all these different gradients of color now and as I say there's no rush so if you um go on if you feel like it's drying a little bit the paint you can just get your water mister wherever I've put mine I don't know but yeah you can just grab your water mister um and just give it a bit of a spritz and then that will reactivate the paint it's here so you can just get your mister and just reactivate it um, and that will cause the paint to kind of become wet again um, it does reactivate very easily so it does need to be sealed very well when you do finish you know finish up with it um, but yeah you can as you saw at the beginning with these chalk pastes you can paint with them like you would a normal paint albeit I doubt you will ever get a smooth finish um, but you can paint with them like you would you know and get texture with them like you've seen today with these you know I've been stippling I've created this kind of finished look with them so there's lots and lots of different things that you can do with them um, and just take your time so so I've been at this now I don't know how what how long have I been on this live for um, half an hour so I've got the front of this piece pretty much finished I will be adding some I don't think I've got time today I don't because I will I would need to dry it again but I'm going to be spraying some of these um, acrylics on there as well um, but basically you know you can just keep going in there and adding and taking away so I might want to get like a small artist brush like this because you know I feel like I want to add a little bit more age to it so I'll get my little small artist brush get my Turkish coffee and I might just very gently dab over these molds you know so that I've got more control and it doesn't necessarily have to be the finished product straight away you have got time to adjust things and change things and just have a little play around okay so i think i'm about done though for today <laughs> don't think there's much else i can do on here without giving it another blow dry and i don't really want to do that twice on a live if i can help it unless you guys want me to <laughs> so um okay That's looking very rustic. I like it. And it's looking, it's much more colourful as well, like in person. Like I can see the colours are much, are much, much um, brighter. So, um, so yeah, so guys, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, and I'm happy to answer them. Pop them in the comments, drop me a message, whatever. I'm happy to answer them. Um, so just to let you recap quickly what I've done. I went in there with a base of English country, which is this paste here. And you can see how thick, I can do this look and they don't fall. <laughs> That's how thick they are but you can add water to them and thin them out if you want to as well. And then these are the three colours. Look how pretty they are together. These are the three colours that I've used um, over the top. So we've got Neptune here, Buxton Blue, and then the bottom one's Turkish Coffee. And what I'm probably going to do next is, um, I'm, go I'm going to have to wait for it to dry though, unfortunately. I really wanted to do this on the live, but I'm not going to be able to. Um, I've, I brought lots of different colours because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. I think I'm going to get this, um, so this is by Prima as well. And this is one of their acrylic paints. Um, trying to figure out what it's called. It's called Stormy Ocean. So you can get these from Prima as well. It's kind of a new thing they've brought recently. Can you see how it's like a really nice dark teal? Um, and what I will do is I will get a water mister. So I'll, I, would, I will just get a water mister with just a tiny little bit of water in. I'm going to pour a little bit of this in. It's probably going to be about a 50-50 solution. And then I'm just going to spray it and let it drip a little bit. So I'm going to create some drips and that will also create some shadows as well. So that's another thing that you can do with the um, Prima paints is um, you can use these acrylics as well to help like enhance your, enhance your furniture finish. So 
Anyway, uh, thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Alison. I appreciate you all watching. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I feel like I've talked a lot. <laughs> I don't normally talk this much. I feel like lockdown, um, all I really talk to is my dogs these days. <laughs> And um, and so sometimes now when I'm talking for like any long period of time, I just think, wow, I've not talked this much for ages. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna pop off now, but thank you all so much for keeping me company. I hope you all like kind of learned something new today, maybe giving you something new to try, because it's always exciting to try new things and products, I think. So yeah, so the chalk paste are very good. Definitely recommend them. Um, I've used them a lot and I love them. So um, yeah, can't recommend them enough. And I don't ever recommend comp you know products that I don't like myself, so. Um, if you look back at some of my older work, then I've, I've used them quite a bit. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop off now. Anyway, so have a wonderful evening, guys. And yeah, and as I say, let me know in the comments. I'll keep an eye on them if you've got any questions or drop me a message. So I will see you later. Take care and bye bye.